Welcome back to week two, uh, where we're talking about igneous rocks and volcanic activity. This is video three, where we're going to get into the major volcanic landforms and how viscosity is related to those landforms. So some of the major types of volcanoes and volcanic features we see include shield volcanoes, cinder cones, composite or strato volcanoes, lava domes, and calderas. We also see volcanic features at mid-ocean ridges, flood basalts, and plutons. Um, now I have this um, text here, the Google Earth Tour. I have a Google Earth file posted on the course Moodle page for you to download and open in Google Earth. And it has some place marks around at various um, volcanoes around the U.S. that are of interest to you in this class. So make sure you check that out and you can see kind of the scale of each of these features. So shield volcanoes, these are the largest of all of the features that we see. These usually have wide gradual slopes, very, very large scale features. So things like the Hawaii volcano, as you can see, has this low slope. Um, and these tend to have more effusive eruptions. This means calmer. Um, the magma oozes out onto the surface as lava. Um, very s little explosive um, activity and the magmas are usually uh, basaltic or mafic in composition. And here you can see just a um, close-up of one of these lava flows, and here's kind of a zoomed-out version of what those lava flows look like. So um, very calm, um, kind of a warm maple syrupy type eruption at these volcanoes. Um, the next type are cinder cones. These are also mafic or basaltic. We see lava flows associated, um, but we get this smaller cone shape, this is the smallest feature that we see. Um, they have this cone shape because there's lots of gases present in the magma as it's rising to the surface and then when it erupts the gases r are released and we get this um, a little bit more explosive eruption and we get these cinders that are developed. And here you can see a cinder cone um, erupting right here. So um, still small scale, not a crazy huge eruption like we have at uh, Mount St. Helens, but still um, volcanic in nature. And here's a picture of uh, what this landscape would look like uh, with cinder cones all over the place in uh, Idaho. Composite or stratovolcanoes, these have more felsic or intermediate magmas. This is what we have in our neck of the woods. Very steep sided volcanoes, a typical volcano shape that people think of. These volcanoes are very dangerous, highly explosive, and that's because of the type of magma present. Um, it, we have highly viscous magmas that have a hard time reaching the surface, pressure builds up, and then we have this crazy huge explosions. Um, so we've got Mount Hood and the most recent eruption here of Mount St. Helens as well. Now, in these composite or stratovolcanoes, like, such as in the crater of Mount St. Helens, what we have is a lava dome. Here you can see a close-up of that, la that lava dome and um, some of the ash coming off of it as it's, this volcano is basically reforming itself over time. Um, these lava domes are smaller in scale, felsic intermediate magma, and they occur within a composite or stratovolcano. These are explosive eruptions. They're usually a little bit smaller eruptions. We still get ash or tephra um, erupted when these uh, lava domes are forming, but not nearly the size as when a composite volcano completely blows up. And then we have features called calderas. Um, these can occur uh, many different types of volcanoes. We see them in shield volcanoes like Kilauea. Um, we see them in um, composite volcanoes such as in the Pacific Northwest, Crater Lake. And then at hot spots like Yellowstone hot spot, here you can see basically almost the entire park is the caldera. And here you can see um, this caldera and the magma that exists below it. So basically I posted a great video on how calderas form. What happens is this magma below the surface erupts out onto the surface. We are left with a void space and then the surface then collapses down into that void space and produces this large circular shaped basin. This video is a great um, little experiment uh, that you could do at home if you really wanted to.
So those are calderas. They can be, especially the Yellowstone caldera, um, is a, a rhyolitic or felsic magma, highly explosive and very dangerous and very large as well. We also have volcanic activity landforms at mid-ocean ridges. So this is where we have two plates pulling away from one another. Uh, we get these um, submarine volcanoes that can develop um, along these mid-ocean ridges. We get these black smokers that develop as well. So we have very similar features on the ocean floor. And um, we also get very similar features at these flood basalt locations as well. We get basalt flows um, that erupt on the surface. We get these fissures that can develop, like in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we have um, a huge area covered by these Columbia River basalts that erupted from fissures out in kind of eastern Oregon, um, Idaho area, and basically just flooded the landscape and covered the whole area. Now, in some places, these uh, basalts float into water. Um, and you can see some of these pillow basalts that resulted from that interaction with water in the dowels. And we get these pillow basalts also along those mid-ocean ridges as well. Um, here we've just got numerous layer upon layer of these basalt flows. Uh, we also see these in India, um, uh, what's called Deacon Traps as well. So these are um, pretty amazing features. And then we have what are called plutons or intrusive igneous rocks. We see these exposed at the surface where we've had weathering, um, uplift and gradation, um, lifting the crust upwards, eroding the surfaces, and then exposing those rocks to us. So these occur when magma doesn't reach the surface. They're usually felsic in composition. Um, Yosemite is a good example of one huge pluton, and then here you can see one in uh, Canada, New Brunswick. So how does this rel uh, related to viscosity? Well, we have these various different types of landforms uh, that are a direct result uh, to and related to the type of magma present. So viscosity um, is basically telling you how thick that magma is. A low viscosity magma has a low silica content, which means it has a low resistance to flow. Um, think of hot maple syrup would be a good example. A high viscosity magma has a high silica content and has a high resistance to flow, so it doesn't want to move. So if you take that maple syrup right out of the fridge, it's hard to get it out of the container. And so high viscosity uh, would be, and I have these switched, um, high viscosity would be Mount St. Helens, and a low viscosity would be basaltic or Hawaii style, more effusive. So, this, so how does why does silica matter? Well, this silicon oxygen tetrahedron, each of these corners has a negative charge, so it wants to try to bond with the other elements that are in that magma. So the more of these that are present the more we have these small attractions within that magma and the more um, resistant it is to moving from place to place. So here we've got a high viscosity eruption, explosive, and then a low viscosity eruption, very effusive and oozy type of eruption. So these low viscosity, the magma tends to be able to run out, we get those low sloping features, high viscosity, we get massive eruptions, and it build up very close to uh, the source of that uh, material. So those are the major volcanic landforms and uh, how they're related to viscosity.